My name is Charles Sabine. I'm 49 years old, and for more than half my life, I've spent working for NBC News as a television journalist. I've been shot at in Chechnya, I've been blown up in Iraq, and I've been taken hostage in Bosnia. But nothing has instilled more fear, dread, and terror in me than the personal battle that I now face. Huntington's disease, the disease that took my father and is now inflicting on my brother the same decline in his prime, will take me too. Charles joins us today here as well as our good friend and colleague, Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, the Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. Thank you both so much for being here. And Charles was referring to Huntington's disease. That's a genetic disorder that affects about one in every 10,000 people. Sadly, it has no cure and causes the progressive breakdown of nerve cells in the brain. It strikes most people in the prime of their lives and is ultimately fatal, which makes it such a, a difficult diagnosis. Now, Huntington's is a disease that destroys the part of the brain that controls movement. And so people who have the disease develop writhing, jerky movements that are involuntary. And as the disease progresses, it may affect the ability for people to think and may also affect personality and behavior. And then ultimately, as you know, um, people with Huntington's lose the ability to walk, to speak, um, and to swallow. And Charles, what has your experience been with, with HD? Well, Travis, my, both my brother and I inherited the gene from my father that will give us the disease. He sadly passed away in 2001. I am at the moment pre-symptomatic, uh, but I will develop those symptoms and the disease. But uh, my brother John, who was recently described by a high court judge as the most brilliant lawyer of his generation, now has to have uh, carers change his diapers for him. I want people to understand that, you know, Charles, you're opening up about this diagnosis because a lot of people don't know anything about it. HD is caused by a faulty gene. It is passed from parents to children. Every child of a parent who has Huntington's disease has a 50-50 chance of inheriting the gene with that faulty mutation. Only those who possess the faulty gene will develop HD and potentially then pass it on to their children. And if you're out there, you want more information about the blood test, ask your doctor about seeing a genetic counselor. Yeah, it's the genetic test has been a, a, a greatly empowering tool, though, Travis, for us in the Huntington's community. It has, for example, enabled my wife and I to know that our two small children will not uh, happily be uh, in uh, developing the disease. I don't want anyone who, from a Huntington's family to listen to anyone who says there's nothing that you can do about this disease. There's plenty you can do about your lifestyle and your environment to offset the uh, onset of the disease. I'm, I'm so um, happy that you brought that up because it is very important. Um, there are a lot of tools. The first tool is one that you've um, already engaged in, and that is establishing a strong support network uh, of family and friends. And then there's a greater Huntington's disease community out there um, that you can tap into for support, for ideas on how to manage the disease. And then last but not least, you mentioned lifestyle changes that may help both manage the symptoms and could potentially delay the progression of the disease. Also working with your healthcare team as symptoms evolve, things like speech therapy, physical therapy can be helpful. Seeking treatment for depression or anxiety that may result, that can be absolutely essential as well. Yeah, and there's a lot of hope right now. This is a time where science um, and research have really advanced more than ever before in Huntington's disease. And I should probably also take the opportunity to personally thank you. I mean, you have done so much uh, to share your story, to give people hope, to actively advance um, research. And I really want to thank you for all of that. Well. well you know. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. And I, and I really must second what you say there. Thanks to the extraordinary work of the research community and amazing organizations like the HDSA here in the United States that people can find online at www.hdsa.org. Thanks to those kinds of organizations, there has never been a better time to have this terrible disease. And of course, for more information, people can go to gethealthystayhealthy.com. Thank you so much. I thank you. Well, you're a true, true inspiration. We'll be right back.